G'day, Teeth here from PickingLessons.com. In this banjo lesson, we're gonna take a look at some bluesy melodic licks, a lot of fun. We're gonna be using the G major scale in combination with the G mixolydian scale and the blues, uh, some chromatic notes and some arpeggios. That's how these licks are all constructed. In a moment, we're gonna take a look at the first three licks uh, over a G, over an F and over a C chords. But if you head to PickingLessons.com, you better get yourself a copy of this tablature that we're working from. It has all the licks in there. You'll find the next part of this lesson where we break down the remainder of the licks and we'll have a little slow playthrough of the preview that we heard at the beginning of the lesson. So PickingLessons.com. Okay, so let's have a look at these first three licks. Firstly, we're playing in the key of G, we're treating it kind of bluesy. We're bringing in the F chord as well. Think of tunes like Salt Creek or June Apple. It gives you that kind of sound. You hear it in different songs as well. So the G to the F. So we're going to be using that F note as part of these licks. So the Mixolydian scale gives us this sound. So it has the F note as opposed to the F sharp, which is in the G major scale. Mixolydian. So a little bluesier perhaps, the Mixolydian scale has that F note, the, the flat seven against the G chord, so it's like a G7 sound. Uh, we'll also use some, some passing notes from the chromatic scale and some bluesy notes as well, like the flat three into the major third. So we'll get that kind of sound over several of the chords as well. Uh, we'll have a look at these licks in a moment, but that's basically what we're using and some, uh, some arpeggios as well. So really focusing on the notes of the chords at times in our playing. So let's have a look at this first lick. The first G lick, the first G lick is really focusing on the Mixolydian, has the passing flat three note in there as well. So first lick. So we had a pick up there. So two, three, four, one. We're going to stop there early on that G, resolving that particular lick. The next two notes will treat as passing notes to get into the F. So the first thing to really take away from this as we're starting to learn some of these ideas is you won't necessarily use them as a carbon copy. Take them as a starting point, but you'll need to sort of tweak as you go depending on what chord perhaps is coming next, or maybe it's a longer G passage. So this is only two measures. You'll combine it with something else, or maybe you do it a couple of times to get you through the amount of time that you, you, you need to play. This is a starting point again, so we're going to resolve to the G. Look at how it connects to the chord and analyze it that way. So we are using that Mixolydian scale, but we're running through the... Up to the S, yes. so it's kicking off on the B note, passing notes. Up to the G, running back down. resolving to that G using that F down the bottom as well. So a typical melodic type passage, so a lot of finger thumb, finger thumb in your right hand. It's all in the tab, so keep an eye on that. And our hand position here for the left hand finger position, we're really out of that third position there, finger three on fret five. Pretty straightforward. It's in the tablature if you get lost. Uh, but the lick itself again, we'll play it through once more over the G chord, giving us a real bluesy sound, but using this melodic style of playing with the pickup two, three, to the G. Sounds good. You can use that as part of your Scruggs playing. You could use it in different contexts. It's just a G lick, two measures. Uh, have, practice it up again, but remember you might need to tweak it depending on what else is happening there, but that's pretty cool. Let's move on to the next chord. So this one we're playing over an F. So an F chord you might find uh, in, in a change in a song where it goes from the G down to the F chord there. So it could be a song, could be a tune. The F lick though, because we're in G tuning, that could be a bit of a challenge, but let's have a look at how we're going to approach it. Firstly, we've got a couple of pickup notes running us in. So D, E into the F. So we're heading to the root note F. I'll play you through the lick, have a listen. The next chord changes to C, so that C is kind of anticipating the next chord, but it is also included in the F, so let's just consider that's where we're going to stop for this F lick on the C note, which is part of the F chord. The two pickup notes gets us to the root note position there for the F. Then what happens is we're really focusing on the arpeggio notes of the chord. So we're shifting from this lower position F to the major third, sliding to the fifth, 
then into the root note again, into the major third. There's no open strings there, so that little idea using the arpeggios there with a the slide, you could actually use that over any major chord. G, uh, A, B flat. Doesn't matter because there's no open strings. Whatever happens next though will be determined probably with uh, your tuning and the key and everything else. But that particular major arpeggio sound would work over any major chord. So after that arpeggio, we're using a bunch of passing notes to duck and weave inside and outside of our chord. So there's the F note. That's going to be a bit of a tonal center. The E there is a passing note. So we keep coming back to the F, F, E, F, G, F, keep coming back to the F note, then we're going to run down. To the C, which is part of our F chord as well. Uh, it is anticipating the next change at the same time, so we're two functions for that particular note. Uh, so from that up edge, you So a lot of weaving in and out, very sort of fiddle player like there. So we've got our central point, but we're moving above and below that pitch, always coming back into that note. And really it's quite effective over the chords. So we're starting again with the passing notes, arpeggio into a weaving around the F. To the C there. We could continue on back into F, we could probably loop that lick quite easily. So as you come through from the C at the end into the F arpeggio, So depending on context, things will change. Remember, not a carbon copy necessarily that you're trying to do here, you're taking the ideas. So this idea, just one more time, summarizing was the arpeggio. Then around the F is our central point, we're sort of ducking and weaving through that Mixolydian scale. Third chord, or third lick in here, we have the C. The C lick, we're starting on measure one. We, we could use the pickup notes from the previous uh, measure, but we won't, we'll just start on beat one. And we're gonna be sliding into this major third of the C chord. So the E is the major third, the E flat is the flat three for that particular chord. And our opening portion of the lick, really focuses on the two note double stop there in the C. Uh, we then continue on with these double stops. I'll just play through the idea so you can have a listen. Finishing on the G there, which is part of the next lick, but would also tie into the C chord because of course we have a, a G note in our C chord anyway. So the idea kicks off on that first and second fret slide. So E flat to E flat three to the major third. Then we shift into double stop positions. This is really cool because what we're gonna do here is shift into a C at fret five, then into a C7 sound, and then into a C9 sound before we close it out. So C position, C position at fret five. Fret eight gives us a C7 position with the B flat in there. And then the 12th and 11th frets, 11th and 12th there. That's giving us the B flat and the D note, which is part of that C9 extension. So over our C chord, we're actually creating that bluesy dominant uh, seven, dominant ninth extension. So we have the hammer, uh, sorry, we have the slides. Then these quick slides, five, eight, 12, and 11, closing out. We're gonna play this lick here using our thumb, so it's third finger, thumb, first and second. Open G to conclude the lick, part of the next lick, but would be okay over the C chord. Once through, again, one more time, nice and slow, getting those double stop positions really clean. So quick little transitions, quick slides. You can keep using things one and two through there as well. So three, four. To the G. So it's a great little lick there. Uh, G, F, C so far. We have more G, F, 
and C and a D lick as well, D licks as well, uh, in the next portion of this lesson. So if you head to pickandlessons.com, we'll continue on this path and we'll learn the remainder of the licks that we have here that we heard at the beginning of this lesson, this video. Uh, you also get the chart. You also have a slow playthrough of the entire thing there as well. So if you wanted to work on that with a backing track. All right, so pickandlessons.com, I'll see you there.